Hello and welcome back to Cutleaf. So since uploading this post the other day of the long panoramic breakwater sunrise um, and sunny day on a foam board and canvas, I've had a lot of people ask me how I've taken the picture, edited, stitched it together, um, how I've made the sales that I've had. So I decided to take a look at Etsy the other day um, to see how my prints were competing against each other. And the panoramic one, which you saw the other day, um, is actually my highest selling, not in terms of how many orders I've had, but in terms of revenue. So if we just click on stats, you can see that uh, since I've started my Etsy store, I've had 11.4 thousand visits, which is pretty cool. Um, I've had 355 orders and the revenue, I'm um, just below 10k on revenue now. That's not profit. That's just um, what I've made in sales. Uh, as you can see, month by month, January was wicked. It's gone down a little bit because I've started my own website now um, and I'm going to try to start selling through there. But if we just scroll down, um, you'll see that this listing is up the top and it's had 1,108 views and we've had 21 orders and the revenue is over £1,000 with this print. So that's one photo from the Mavic Mini 1, £1,000 in revenue, and that's just on Etsy. I think I've had, you know, about uh, maybe eight, nine more orders of this print, so I think we could be looking around the fifteen to 1700 mark, um, especially with the canvas and foam boards on top. You know, it's crazy to think that this profit can be made. And again, you've got to take the photo, you've got to market it correctly. Even when you take it, you've got to, you know, everything's got to be right about the, the image. So what I did today, I went to the exact same location and I wanted to show you guys how I took this photo and how I edit it together um, to become a print. The process will be a little bit different. So originally I shot on the Mini 1 and of course now I'm on the Mini 2. Um, but it's pretty much the same rules for the Mini 1 anyway. So if you've still got a Mini 1, don't worry, you can apply the same way that I'm about to teach you of how to do this. So yeah, I went out earlier today. It's a lovely sunny day um, to get the same picture. So I recorded my phone screen and I thought that I could just talk you through how I took the photo um, as opposed to taking my camera out and talking to the camera there. I thought it'd just be easier to go out, shoot it quickly, come back to the office and do it here. Okay, so the photo that I'd originally taken for this video um, didn't really work. So I went out the other morning and reshot the um, same image just from a different side. Um, but it's pretty much exactly the same as the picture um, that we're talking about. So I'm going to just do a voiceover over the screen recording from when I took the shot and also voiceover whilst we edit as well. But yeah, let's dive in to the screen recording just to talk about how I took the shots and then go into Lightroom. So see you in a sec. So yeah, as I mentioned, I wanted the same image, but just from the other side of the breakwater. So I wanted that sunrise golden hour on the brickwork, um, and also to get a bit of the harbour in the back and a bit more structure in the background as opposed to just the sea. Um, so if I just hit pause there. So what we're going to do, we're going to switch to the AEB mode um, with the Mini 2 just because it gives us those three different um, exposure levels in the same image. Uh, if you're using the Mini 1, then just change the shutter speed um, to grab those highlights and shadows and you just have to manually take the uh, image unless you've got the Litchi app which as well does the AEB bracketing. So yeah, I'll just hit play. So we're going to switch there to the AEB mode. There we go. And again, I just sort of turn the camera to get the composition in mind to see when I take into Lightroom how I'm going to stitch it. So always have a look, bring it back a little bit as you can see there. Uh, turn him and then yeah I'm good to go so I'm just going to pause it a sec but yeah just change the uh, shutter speed settings again to grab the mid tones and then yeah just go for it from there move the camera slightly take your picture and move it to the right again just there and hit pause so yeah, that is literally the process behind taking the images. Um, the rest is done in the post process. So it's as simple as that. Sort of take the camera back, turn you know turn the camera, see what sort of framing you want to get. But what we'll do now, we're just going to take those images into Lightroom and get started with the editing. So see you there. Okay, so now we've got our photos. What we want to do is open up Lightroom, go to Add Photos up the top there. Um, I've already got mine in a folder. 
you know, just to make it a bit quicker for the video. Highlight those and click review for import. Go ahead and click add your nine photos. So the first thing that we want to do is highlight the first three of the same image at different exposures. Right click those and then go to photo merge and click HDR merge. We don't need to de-ghost anything, so we can uncheck that because there's nothing really moving in the image apart from the water, but it won't be anything too major. Okay, so what's that done? It's now merged all the images, so you've got more information to be played with. You can, up the top here, click Apply Auto Settings, which would just um, expose the image differently, like do a basic edit, but I'll have to do everything manually, so I'm just going to leave that unticked. Go ahead and click Merge. And now it's the second photo in, so we know where that is. Now we're going to repeat the same process for the other two images. So let's do that. Okay, so now we've HDR merged all of our images. What we're going to do, we're going to select the images that have been merged together. So for me, it's the second photo in. Sometimes it pops up over here. Um, you know, they separate the images into a different folder, but here they're just within the same batch of images. So we're going to select that one. Okay, so now we've selected our three HDR merged images. We're going to right click again, click photo merge, and instead of HDR merge, we're going to click panorama merge. So we've got three different projection options. We've got spherical, cylindrical, or perspective. Um, perspective won't work with these, but we'll try spherical and cylindrical to see what we like most. So spherical's done a pretty good job, sort of like how that's turned out. And with cylindrical... Not much difference at all, as you can tell. It's just a bit bigger, which I like. Um, and then we're going to hit auto crop, and that just crops the image in for us. Perfect. And again, we can apply the auto settings. And I actually quite like um, how Lightroom's edited this image for me so far. So I'm going to actually leave that one ticked. Um, nothing's really overexposed. It's sort of balanced. I like the colors. So yeah, go ahead and click merge. Okay, so this is our starting image. This is where the fun part starts. So the first thing I do in Lightroom is I click the tab up the top and I just start playing a little bit more with uh, the light settings. So we're just going to boost the contrast up ever so slightly more. We're going to bring those highlights all the way down. With the shadows, I just want to bring it up slightly all the way to the top. The blacks, the whites. Um, we could add a little bit more white there. And I'm just going to take the blacks down. Again, with the editing, guys, it's all down to personal preference. Uh, the tone curves, I might bring those up slightly just by a smidgen. Uh, the mid-tones in the tone curves, let's just bring those down a little bit. And bring the highlight part up. Perfect. So that's the light setting done. I don't really touch this color. I like to come to the color mixer. So we'll start with the reds first and just play with the hue. Nothing's really changing that much. Uh, the oranges. I sort of like the natural color coming in from the sunrise, but we're just going to boost the saturation a little bit more. And We don't want to overexpose the buildings in the back or the or the breakwater. So we're just going to actually bring that down a little bit. And we can change that um, in when it comes to Photoshop. The yellows. Again, I like that orangey sort of feel. So we're just going to boost the saturation again. And with this one, we can bring the luminance up a little bit. Because it's not really doing anything to the buildings as much. Um, so we're going to bring it around to about nine so again that's before that's your after so far okay so um our till we're gonna i sort of like that till sort of color um the you know off blue like the sort of turquoise you see so we're gonna just boost the saturation in that and we're gonna bring the luminance down i'm getting these uh, color names right that is till isn't it or yeah but that that blue one there um, and then the blues again we're going to give it that sort of color bring it down by minus 15 bring the saturation up and uh, we'll, we'll expose we'll expose it a little bit more so we'll bring the luminance up to about 17 before after 
I think when I'm editing, I sort of think, what would people like to hang on their walls, you know? If we just have something like that, it's a bit dull and flat. People like stuff that's vibrant, um, you know, something that will really pop. And I think for an image like this with the different colours, you need to bring those colours out, uh, which, as you can just see there, we are doing, we're trying to do. Um, with the colour grading tool, I sort of like to adjust this slightly so I might bring the warmth out of the um, sunrise so let's just bring that up ever so slightly the highlights again I want to bring that warmth of the sunrise out so we're going to bring that up slightly so we're going to bring a little bit of clarity into the image just to give it a little bit more detail I don't think there's much noise if we zoom in as you can see look absolutely beautiful the quality that you can get out of this thing um, but yeah, I don't think there's much noise to be reduced in the image if we do it too much, yeah, it just gives, yeah, I'm not a fan of that. So we'll bring it back. We might just bring it up actually a little bit to around 9. Okay, so that's our before, that's our after. You can play with the, uh, the geometry, so sometimes I like to distort the image a little bit just to give it a little bit more, a little something different. So I might bring it in a little bit like that. There we go, that's nice. Uh... And then the aspect, we can either, you know, stretch it out or bring it in a little bit. But I'm sort of happy with how it is. Um, and again, so that's like my base um, edit for this image. So I'm happy with that. Again, we can go into, you know, the gradient tool and the brush tool and do more. But I don't like to spend too much time on each image because you end up playing with it forever. For me... Really happy with how this image is looking, so I'm going to go ahead and take it into Photoshop now. So we're going to go ahead, click File up top, and click Edit in Photoshop. Okay, so once it's open, the first thing that I do, I go ahead, click Command J, New Layer, um, and then first thing I do is I play with the colors again. So I go to Selective Color, uh, the yellows. Let's just move that out a little bit. Again, I like that sort of red feel to it. The red and orange sort of combined. Um, not too much. Won't touch that one. And yeah, we'll, we'll brighten it up a little bit more. And then the blues again. Let's pump up the cyan. Bring it back on the magenta. Back on the yellow a little bit. And let's bring the blacks down so it's not as contrasty. We get a little bit of a bright C there. The blues. Let's bump up the cyan. Bring down the magenta a little bit. Yellow's okay. And the black, again, let's bring it back slightly. And then sometimes I like to play with the whites to make them a little bit more neutral. Uh, so let's just bring those the cyan back, the magenta back a little bit, yellow, and let's pump up the uh, blacks out of that. Okay, so again with the uh, selective color tool, let's go to the before. That's the before when we took it from Lightroom into Photoshop and that's the after since just i know it's very minor but um again like i said it's just something i like to do then what we're going to do is hit option command shift and e just merge those layers together and then the next step that i always do into uh, photoshop is use the healing brush tool to remove anything out of the image that just sort of takes my eye from what i want to be the main focus which is the breakwater um so I'm just going to start moving some bits out. And don't be scared to um, get rid of some stuff, like stuff in the image. It's, you know, creative choice. You don't have to leave everything that's in there. Um, again, it's like painting an image. So we are artists at the end of the day. Um, as long as we don't change it, you know, dramatically. But anything that just pulls, pulls the eye that we don't want it to. And it could be the smallest detail, just like over here that cone okay I don't mind the guy on the rocks I think it adds a little bit of character uh, it's like early morning fishing 
But these horrible red cones, I, I don't really like. But I th think that's all this image really needs. And my computer is running slow as hell because I am screen recording, audio recording, and working with a large file. But yeah, again, so just that's with those in before I've um, taken them out, and then that's with them out. So like I said... If they were in there, that red cone especially, just pulls the eye a little bit, remove it, and then, it, you know, I, for me, it doesn't do it as much, um, it's not there. There you go. Okay, so the next step, Option, Command, Shift, and E, bring those layers together again, and then we're going to add two curves adjustment layers. So, we're going to multiply the first one, then hit Command, I, and then we're going to go to Screen on the other one, and hit Command, I. And then we're just going to rename those. How do I rename it? There we go. Uh, we'll call that screen. And then we'll call this multiply. Okay. So with screen, go ahead, hit B on your keyboard to select your brush tool. Or just come over to here and select it. And... We're just going to start with quite a large brush. Up here, we're going to change the opacity down to around 20 and the flow around 20, 20 to 30 is fine. And then I'm just going to start painting in some of the highlights a bit more. So as you can see in the clouds over here where the sun is on the sort of uh, sea ground where that orange is really sort of reflecting. We've got some whites over here up the top. A little bit though in the clouds and then along this brickwork we're just going to brush in some of those highlights again and don't be scared to go over any shadows as well it's stuff that will sort out so there actually i don't really like that bit there we go on the actual breakwater and then what we're going to do, we're going to boost the opacity to around about 60 to 70 and the flow. And then I really want these um, the sunrise reflection on the windows to pop as well. So I'm just going to start brushing over those just to give it a little bit of kick in the background there. So as you can see, we're just giving it a little bit more. And again, on the buildings around here, a bit too much there. Let's bring the opacity down. Just a little bit, just on certain areas, you know, the reflection on the floor, on these buildings. Okay, so without the uh, brush on the screen, so that's without and that's with. As you can see, it just brings a little bit of depth to those highlights. So now we'll go to the... Um, the dark so the multiply bring the brush up don't forget to reset it down to about 20 um, and we'll just start brushing in around this area that's a bit too strong for me let's change that to around about 17 enlarge the brush change the flow okay that's a bit better and then some of these shadows around the floor I'm just going to strengthen the brush just to make those pop a little bit more. And again around here. Just want a bit more contrast in the background there. Around there. Okay so that's. That's without the darks. That's with the darks. So let's remove both of those. So as you can see. That's with the highlights. And then that's with the darks. It just gives that image a little bit more depth. Don't be scared, like I said. You can always undo these things. Uh, brush a few more highlights in. Okay, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with that. Really happy. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and click Option, Command, Shift, and E again. The next step for the image is if it isn't large enough already. Uh, we can reduce the noise of the image, actually. Uh, if there is any there, we can just go to Noise and then Reduce Noise. or but what I like to do afterwards, I used to do this a lot with the Mini 1 photos and just increase the image size. Um, I think I'm going to do the same with this one. So I'm going to go ahead, click Image, 
image size and then we want to change the resolution there from 240 pixels per inch to 300 and then again that just increases the image size when it comes to print we just get that little bit more quality but look at that i mean you can't really say anything against this mini 2 it's just spectacular so yeah go ahead click ok okay so once that's done that is the image complete guys so you know like I said, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I love the colours. I love the pop. You know, I can imagine that on a metallic paper or gloss finish, uh, 48 inches by 16 or whatever sort of size um, we'll print at. So, yeah, that is it. Uh, then we go ahead, click File, Export, and we're going to save that as a JPEG file. And that is ready to become a print. So there you go. That is how I edit. That's the start to finish process from taking the photos uh, to editing. So yeah, that's the original on the Mini 1. <clears throat> and that's our Mini 2 shot. So I'm excited to see how that one goes down with uh, the customers. Again, like I said, it's just a little bit different. So we've got the um, golden arrow on the brickwork. We've got the buildings in the back, the reflections. And on this one up here, uh, we actually see the sun. And um, I had to do some work to try to uh, expose the actual brickwork itself. But same sort of colours. So if people have bought this print before, they're most likely hopefully going to buy this one. So they've got uh, you know both perspectives of the breakwater looking different directions. So there you go, guys. That is the process from taking the image to editing um that is the image well it's not the exact image but um earned me uh, over probably about 1500 1600 pound in revenue um which is crazy to think that one photo can accomplish that it just has to be the right moment the right edit everything about it has to be marketed correctly but yeah now i've shown you how to take the panoramic image you should have the skills to do the same um for your own work and hopefully drive sales in the same way not how i expected the video to come out um because obviously i recorded this whole thing with a previous image uh, it just didn't really work but i found that that image was so much better to use as an example more content to come i'm a busy guy but i'm trying to put as much out there for you so you can learn as much as you can um but yeah like i said once again if you like the video please give it a big thumbs up hit the sub button below and i'll see you next time for another video see you then